Beret wearing revolutionaries. Protests. Fear. Passion. Rebellious spirit. Charismatic. Zapatistas. Truth. Castro. Apraxis. Strangeness. Unique. Shock art. The hammer and sickle. Yeah, Alienation. Time. Just embracing complexities. And how am I for an idealist? You can critique me. That's just what they want you to think. If you accept their broken world. You're just a realist. You're just a realist. Radical defines itself outside of the norm. It's like very dark and there are people with like those bombs, those like bottle bombs, and they're throwing things and stuff like that. I know that's not what it's really like. These are the violent anarchists, and they see nothing wrong with the scene. Why is that? Uh, violence. I think of Sacco and Vanzetti and uh, Triangle Shirtwaist Factory and all that sort of thing. I mean, I guess that's more like classical action anarchy raise issues in the way that food not bombs people do and, and organizing local communities and trying to take things into your own hands in very, very specific ways. Chop down the very pillars of this society and rebuild them in a more equitable way. I was part of a circus. I was the narrator, but then I also acted as a guy who builds a mall on like a pristine swampland and then the skunk ape tries to get a job, but I say, well, no, you can't get a job. You smell wild and free. As people get older, I think that they realize that it's one of those things that's really nice in theory. But New Orleans was fucking crazy. Like, pretty much we entered into the situation uh, at the Common Ground in the Lower Ninth Ward. There were black bodies floating in the streets today. Rushing down with boats and vans like a stroke of luck. FEMA turned them back with folks still stuck up on their roofs for days. And weeks grew from those days, and there were black bodies floating in the streets. There were people hanging their heads today, crying out a desperate rage. Who can we blame for the flooded streets? For the evacuation was incomplete. There's so much left to say. I uh, started to identify myself politically in opposition to uh, what I was seeing happening in the world. I think of two different kinds of radicalization. Positive radicalization as in something creative, something new, something great, something you could do for humankind. And then there's the ignorant. When I think of radicals, I think of people that are generally so wound up in an ideology that they can't escape it. I walked on coals for it. My friend like lay on a bed of nails and had a uh, cinder block broken on his chest with a sledgehammer. Just had this idea and went for it and built it and went all the way to South Florida. Like we toured two weeks and we look for this magical being. But I feel like to be radical is to actively try and change it by whatever means you feel are necessary. I had to do some house gutting. It seems like the most effective thing that you can do to try and like help get residents moving back into their own houses. But after I did it for a couple days, like I was just, I, I had internalized all of the grief and like just wasn't able to get up in the morning. So I realized that was not a productive use of my time, uh, even though it was really gratifying. Creative ways of conceiving of life, everything from food to relationships to um, how government should really be organized from the bottom up. Questioned sort of the way things were set up in America, specifically capitalism as killer of magic. The idea was that we were resurrect, trying to resurrect magic back in our own lives and in the lives of people. People in the audience were really profoundly affected um, by it often. Anarchists putting their words into action. Small in numbers, yet their methods grab all the attention. Is there a rationale for all this? Like I just remember one day Lauren and I were uh, just, we were about to break through this wall with our crowbar, but there was like this water bed that the entire like mirrored ceiling had fallen on top of and we had to like try and get all of that wreckage out of the room first. When we uncovered 
the, uh, the ceiling from the bed, we found that there were all of these photographs plastered to it, and then like we started like scraping like the first layer of silt off the wall, and there were the wall was just plastered in like a lifetime's worth of Mother's Day cards. And that fucking got me right in the heart. I was just like, I have to throw all of this shit out. It's covered in black mold. This is someone's life, you know? I can't imagine. Here's this homeless guy who lived in Blue Drop Park. Smileless Bill or something, because I'm never happy and I'm upset. And he was like, but your circus performance made me smile so much. Like after coming from New Orleans, um, that's where I want to be. That's where I, I, like, I felt at the time that that's where I wanted to spend my life. Because I felt like really whole there. See the skunk ape. We saw the skunk ape. All all the things that you're taught to be afraid of, and all the things that you're told that you need, are all bullshit. I'm excited, having you know been an activist for so many years, and seeing that the very actions that our society has taken has not destroyed the impulse. And you can just basically do whatever you want if you're motivated and clever and creative. Every time that I talk with someone or hear about New Orleans or you know watch a movie or read something about it, I always get that same upsetness come up in my stomach and want to go back and do it again.